Here we go again. I don't know why, but for some reason when every game comes a story, so I want y'all to sit back and listen to this overcomplicated process that I took just to get to this game. Now, I knew for about a week, a week and a half, that I wanted to play the Outer Worlds on the channel, you know? So I bought the Outer Worlds on sale because I saw that they had it going for like 19 bucks. Cool. They had another one going for 60. I just thought that was the game and the DLC. I don't really need the DLC. I just want to play the game, you know? So I got the $19 version. It was the PS4 version. I'm good at not paying attention to things and then my gut telling me, yo, you should go back. Because my gut told me to go back and when I checked the Spacer Choice Edition, that was the PS5 version. And so I was like, okay, I just wasted $20 on the 4 version. I don't want to spend a whole 60. So the question was asked, can I upgrade it? Well, yes, but to do that, I'd have to have the original game, which is the one I bought for $19. And on top of that, I'd have to have the two DLCs, which luckily was on sale and I'd get it at a quote unquote reduced price. I was thinking the discounted price would have been fucking $30. So I purchased the DLCs. I go back, it's 10 bucks. What a steal, you know? <laughs> So all together, I bought the two DLCs, the PS4 version and the PS5 version and still paid like 10 to $20 less than I would have paid if I just outright bought the Spacer Choice Edition. That's crazy. Nonetheless, we're here. This is the Outer Worlds. When it first dropped on the Xbox, I played it on the Game Pass and I really liked it. And on top of that, there's a sequel coming out. You know, they announced the sequel, I think a year ago, maybe two. And since then, I've heard nothing, but this is a good time to refresh my memory on the first game and refuel that excitement for the second game. So without further ado, let's get this shit cracking, man. I don't feel like talking no more until I do. Why stay earthbound when prosperity awaits you in the stars? Come to Halcyon, the only colony on the edge of the frontier owned and operated by corporations. A trip of 10 short years will feel like mere minutes, thanks to the comfort and safety of your very own hibernation chamber. You'll wake up in a perfect society designed to maximize your productivity with guaranteed full employment. With only a minor term of service, you will become the master of your own destiny when you go out of this world to the Halcyon Colony. <laughs> Oh, they got this man in the forest of kids. Phineas Vernon Wells, a fugitive. What, he just be stealing bodies and shit? Is this his thing? Hundreds of thousands of colonists left to drift out here forever just to keep from damaging the board's bottom line. Disgraceful. Ah, yes, all this, um, okay, my thing is, what do I want to do though, okay, for sure, hi, um, for sure, hi, um, hi, wait, 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 Good strength, good charm, high dexterity, high intelligence, average perception, average temper. We can increase it as the game go on, but I, I'm good with that. Two points available. Mm. One on the weapons. I hear monarchs in need of more game hunters. Facts. And one on die. If we're ever captured, I'll let you do the talking. 
Facts. Yeah, yeah, that, that feels right. That feels right. We can increase the melee as time goes on, and we can increase the stealth as time goes on. But for now, being a good shooter and being a good talker is what's important to me at least. So we got jobless, a bartender, a barrel worker, a cashier, an electrician, an elevator operator, a factory worker, a farmer, a food tester, a janitor, a mascot? All right, medical technician, safety inspector, a scientist assistant, and a chef. What will be helpful to me? You know what I'm saying? Persuasion, maybe? Sure. At least you know the value of money. I told you I'd be a good talker and a good shooter. Ah, yes. The creative kind of thing. I'm finna have a field day with this shit. I look like a pirate. But fuck it. I, I'd rather look like a pirate than a bum. I need scars on my face to make it look like I've seen some things. Because I have. But I've been in hibernation. You don't know what I've seen in the past, son. Put a little bit of age on me. Not crazy age, come on, bro. I'm be young. Alright, we good. You know JS go for to take the skies, man. Come on, that's not elementary. Come on, son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did good. I ain't tripping. My highest stat is persuasion. My lowest stat is two handed melee. That has to change. <laughs> I need to be I need to be a fighter, you know? I need to be boxing niggas, but like that's not gonna be my main priority. It's either talking to niggas or shooting niggas. So my strength don't really need to be crazy high, but I will keep an eye on two-handed melee. Or at least one-handed to get like, I'm pretty sure that's like, what, knives and shit? I don't know. We'll figure it out as the game goes on. Looks to be your lucky day, my friend. He just takes me and runs. <laughs> Oh, he's going crazy. Initiate skip jump. Huh? What's what's happening? What's this? Who the hell are you? Ah, there you are. Wondering what's going on, eh? Bit of bad news there, I'm afraid. Your colony ship was inexplicably knocked out of skip space and forced to complete its journey at sublight speeds. Oh. This means that you and every other colonist on Hope have been in suspended animation for 70 years, give or take. Normally, <laughs> reviving someone after so long leads to some quite horrifying results. It's called explosive cell death, but it's really more of a liquefaction. <laughs> Something wrong? Oh, yes, well, <laughs> not to worry. I've pumped your body full of a special concoction I devised to keep you from dying so horrifically. Hopefully at all, but uh, I guess we'll see here. Yeah? Unfortunately, I used the last of my chemical supplies, saving you. I know it's a lot to ask, but I must have your help securing more if we're to save the rest of your fellow colonists. Mm -hmm. I'd see it done myself, of course, but the board has a sizable bounty on my head. Now, my ship is inoperative, but I've managed to hire a smuggler to help you out. He'll be... Oh, I see we're in position. Good luck! Okay. I'm about to say nothing of his works. What's happening? Can you hear me? Is this thing working? You. Ah, there you are. Now, uh, where were we? Oh, yes, the smuggler. His name is Hawthorne, and he should be with Alex for you Hawthorne. Tonight. Yes, Sorry. I remember. He's to be your uh, chauffeur, so to speak. Not to worry. I told he's a specialist. 
dashing gunslinger, one of a kind ship, that sort of thing. You'll like him, I'm sure. Thanks. I've also outfitted you with a simple wireless monitor so I can track your progress. I'll check in with you as soon as you land. For sure. Good luck. I'm all the colonists are counting on you. Jay Esco, the last of the colonists. Thanks. Oh, we. Ah, you've landed good. Hawthorne should be close by. Where? What in oh. law's name? Is that him? <laughs> oh, that idiot. I told him to plant Son, the beacon what? and move away, not stand there holding it. Oh well, no sense in letting his ship go to waste. I bet. I remember we go steal the ship. Okay. Ship. Yeah. Better you than the board, huh? Not sure I trusted the fellow. Might have gone after the bounty on my head. Right. Shame about the whole squashing thing. Nasty way to go. Yeah, that must suck. I'm pretty sure that nigga compressed. He looked like a Mortal Kombat fatality when we dropped, bro. My bad, dog. Can we loot his body? I know that's wrong, but yeah, we can't. But I was about to say, yo, that scenery is crazy. Uh, what was the city name? I don't even remember. Uh, let's go. Is he alive? He's alive. Oh, no, it's the animals up front. Okay. He's dead. Adreno. Give me that. The awareness meter over enemies' heads tell you if they are unaware, suspicious, investigating, or alerted. How you mean? Oh. Shit. Chill out. Chill out. Dog. Why did I run? Sun is too alert for an animal, bro. Move around. Ugh. Oh, Lord, yeah, that's ringing, man. For a while. There's bound to be unforeseen side effects. All right. And that's the time thing, correct? We can stop that. Ah! Use the emergency medical. What the fuck? Medi medicinal. Medicinal. What the? F Why did I not know what that said? <laughs> Why was I struggling so hard on medicinal, yo? Yeah. Come here. All right. You've tried the best now. Now try the rest. Spacer's choice. Oh, wow, that stings. Oh, we're all part of the Spacer's Choice family here. Not that I deserve to be. Can't even deliver a company slogan. Oh, don't be so hard on we yourself. We were out on patrol. I saw a marauder camp up in the hills. Thought I could take them. Then my gun misfired. Right through my side. I mean... What are the odds of that, right? Just mm -hmm. barely scraped by with my life. Crawled in here and blocked off the exit with those canisters. I can patch them up. I got medical. <sighs> Looks like the bleeding stopped. I owe you one. All right. Hope you don't mind me omitting this little exchange for my report. Spacer's Choice doesn't like us accepting outside help. Right. Gibbering, flesh-eating, law-breaking, unemployed lunatics with guns mm. some hull had grounded their spacecraft out in the open that's a real good way to attract marauders see those canisters by the entrance marauders come sniffing around in here and i can take them all out with a single shot not bad huh so i can persuade him to give me the gun i'll lie and get the gun or i can intimidate him and get the gun from him i guess i'm gonna be me just give me the gun yeah okay you look like you know your way around a gun. Got some spare ammo. I'm not counting the bullet in my side. Here, you can have my saber too, for patching me up and all. All Spacer's Choice weapons are now 30% less likely to malfunction. You've tried the best, now try the rest. Spacer's Choice. Yes, nailed it that time. I'm glad you did. Can I take this, bro? Do you need this? Give me that. I'll take everything I can have. Um. You might not need it. You uh, you get better now. Damage my ears! Oh, oh, what just happened? 
Oh, get your radio fixed, man. Anyways, I feel like it's better to talk to people based on... Ooh. Due to the complications stemming from being revived after extended hibernation, your brain processes time differently. Pressing the TTD button slows down the world, giving you time to think as well as take action. You have a limited time in this mode. Standing still drains your TTD meter very slowly while moving and attacks drain it faster. The TTD meter refreshes slowly over time. I remember that. But uh, as I was saying, I think it's better to like talk to people based on how they talk to me. Like if they rude, I'll be rude. Yep, I figured. Yep. Ooh. <laughs> oh my god, I'm still the bad nigga I used to be, man. Yo, that nigga's surprised. Look at him. Okay, okay. You want a firefight, dog? You want a firefight, dog? Oh, he's done. He's done. He's done. He surrendered. Yo, he. Ah, right, he got me. He got me. For sure. That nigga surrendered and then baited me in. I respect that, but I don't respect that. I don't know how I feel about that. Lieutenant Mercer, Private. Oh no, we talked to these people. I was about to smoke them. Hey, get over here before you get yourself killed. Yo. Don't know where you came from, stranger, but you best keep your head down. There's marauders hereabouts, and worse, landing violators. Call on that rung leech. Landing in a veil without using an official Spacer's Choice landing pad. I'd slap him with a fine if it weren't for all these marauders shambling about. I've already dealt with a few of these marauders. Unimpressed. You pulling my limb? I, I mean, yeah, of course. Marauders. Bunch of addle brain derelicts. I could round them up all by myself. I just, you know, need a couple of winks to catch my breath. Stretch my legs some. Hey, say. Persuade, lie, intimidate. Don't worry, you sit tight, I'll handle it. Coward, I'll do it myself. Do space destroyers guard back down from a challenge? Well, sometimes. Management's real good at cost-benefit analysis. But, seeing as I'm the acting manager in this situation... Mm-hmm. You know what? You're right. It's time we cross those marauders off, find whoever owns that ship, and file a full report. Exactly. And it's gonna be Fucking laminated. Hell yeah. Oh shit. Get it done, bruh. Come on, Kimball. Damn. The Kimball! Oh, shit. Where is she? Where is she? Where did she go? Kill him, Mercer. No! They got packed and smoked. Kimball! I'm gonna take your cartridge, your saber, and your ammo. That's ridiculous. <laughs> gotta do what I gotta do. Yo, back the fuck up to me. See, you walk up on me with no fucking pistol. What's your deal, son? Oh my god! Oh, that was him. I thought he obliterated me. Son, what was that fallout ass finisher? So I am literally the last man standing. I swear I didn't remember them dying, but I guess, oh my goodness. All right, let's just get on the ship, bro. Please be informed that this vessel contains no valuable plunder. Ada, yo. Hello, Marauder. Yo. I am Ada, the autonomous digital astrogator of this vessel. Mm. Please be informed that I am authorized to use violent retribution against unwanted solicitors. Please return any misappropriated equipment and exit this vessel in an orderly fashion. Failure to do so will result in your immediate destruction. What are you going to do, self-destruct? Huh? Four, three... 
Quiet. You realize we're on the ground, right? Is something supposed to be happening? I, I didn't realize. Yeah. What do you mean disengage the airlocks? We're what? You are still here. My deception protocols have failed. I have been programmed to express disappointment. You're not in the sky, though. You could have. Whoever programmed you to do that should have had more than one like bluff. They got you looking stupid, son. Is this Hawthorne's ship? This vessel is the registered property Thank of you. Captain Alex Hawthorne. I am incapable of accepting orders from anyone other than Captain Alex Hawthorne. I understand. I will require some time to process this information. Thank you for your patience and for your honesty. I'm sorry. I am programmed to take orders exclusively from Captain Hawthorne. If I accept your orders, then you must be Captain Hawthorne. Do you understand? I'm, I'm not Hawthorne. <laughs> I understand. You are speaking metaphorically. You wandered outside this ship and experienced a permanent, life-changing encounter. The old you is dead. Welcome back, Captain Hawthorne. I extend felicitations and congratulations on your life-changing experience. <laughs> You don't understand. My name is Jay Esco. Why are you? Why are you in such denial? I've never seen a computer in such denial. I understand. You are going undercover with an alias. I will update my discretion protocol accordingly. Unfortunately, our engine is currently inoperable. Our main drive suffered a critical power failure, and we were forced to make an emergency landing. The main drive's power regulator has been irreparably damaged and must be replaced. Can I replace it? I doubt I'll find a part like that just sitting in a garage. Astutely observed. However, the probability of locating a power regulator within a worker settlement falls within acceptable parameters of certainty. High capacity huh? power regulators are sometimes employed in the electrical networks of worker settlements. Oh, uh, okay. I have taken the liberty of printing you a new captain's identity cartridge. Please try not to lose it this time. Got you. This cartridge identifies you, Alex Hawthorne, as the registered proprietor <laughs> and captain of the Unreliable. Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Best of luck in your search for a power regulator. Try to stay alive this time. Yeah, I get it. I now, against my will, have to be Alex Hawthorne. Cool. So the only reason I have high tech is because of the hibernation suit. But I'm not going to wear this for too long. So let me put five or four. Let's put four is fine. Four is fine. We'll put three in melee. Uh, okay. And then we'll put one in defense, one in stealth, and uh, one in leadership. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Not leadership. We're going to put... We gonna up the dialogue. No, we gonna up the shooter. We gonna up the shooter. Do I get ten points every time, or is this just like one time? I I guess we'll figure out when I level up again. Twenty five damage when alone in party. Ooh, but then I won't be alone because I know I'm gonna add. I know I'm gonna have people like uh oh, I forgot the girl name, but I'll see her when I see her. Fast travel when encumbered. Hmm. Keep that in mind. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the ability to fast travel because that feels important right now. No, 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 no. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna do base health first. Up my health because that's honestly what we should do. And then, and then, when I get another perk point, I'll do the fast travel. And then after I do the fast travel, I will do the additional uh, vendor thing. A few bits more. So, all right, I got this. I got this planned out. I got this planned out. Who the fuck are you, Ernest? What do you want, boy? I'll be with you, friend. I'm Ernie. I'm the Spacer's Choice Department of Human Resources. Town sent me hereabouts to check on the guards. Now, it seems to me, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but it seems to me they're all dead. Mind telling me what happened here? Yeah, the guards and the locals had a bit of an altercation. Yeah, that's pretty much what happened. The guards accidentally brutally shot themselves while on patrol. Why would I have to lie when I didn't do anything to them? Hmm. Altercation, you say? 
a shame as that goes. Spacer's Choice policy strictly prohibits dying during work hours. Huh? Guess I'd better get to cleaning up. Can't just leave company property scattered about, bleeding out on the dirt. It's against the rules to die on the clock? <laughs> what? I mean, don't you care that they died? That who died? Oh, <laughs> right. Yeah, well, we uh, we do need all the hands we got. What with folks in Edgewater dropping off like sissy pig tumors. Well, this competition don't come for hunting time. <laughs> that is you fucked don't up. You amble on over to Edgewater at your earliest convenience. Constable's office might have work for someone with your, uh, let's just say, aggressive disposition. Oh, and uh, be sure to stop by the Edgewater Provisioner for a can of salt tuna. It's not the best choice. It's Spacer's choice. Oh, you all are just advert. <laughs> what do I want to ask him? Don't get paid bits to chat with strangers. You want to chew the rag? Go talk to Silas over by the cemetery. Whatever, nigga. You lucky I don't blast your shit, son. Where's Edgewater again? That way. I don't trust niggas who give up so easily. A terrible shoot. But I'm a shooter that gets shit done. Oh damn, that's the resident. What are these flowers? These are beautiful. I'm not gonna lie. They don't give you a name of them? Wow. It's crazy. Whoa, hey. Where'd you come from? Why? Don't go ambling out in those hills. That's marauder territory, friend. I already got him through. Ain't safe out here. You'd best head into town. Avail yourself of Edgewater's high walls and low, low prices. Oh, not you too. Well, I guess. <sighs> Is that why you got a pair of armed guards? I'm being vigilant. Don't want to get blindsided by some corpse chewing marauder come stalking out the shadows. That's fair. I never got your name. Pleased to make your acquaintanceship. I'd shake your hand, but I've been hauling corpses. You don't want none of that on you. Uh, fair. Name Silas. Junior in humor for the town of Edgewater. We're all part of the Spacer's Choice family. Respect, respect, respect. All right, let's get straight to the point. I need a power regulator. Definitely not the junior in humor. That's for sure. Ah. <laughs> if you've got business inquiries, you should stop by Reed Thompson's office. He's up in the tower above the cannery. Head into town, follow the road. For sure. Look, you obviously ain't a worker. What's your racket? You a smuggler? Freelancer? Uh, for the right price. Ha! Huh. Yeah. Edgewater is a company town, board owned and operated. Right. That includes the cemetery. None of us own our grave sites. We rent them from the company. Mm -hmm. Renting means money. Money means paperwork. Paperwork means signatures. Facts. Some of our families become a might delinquent in paying their dues, you see. You want me to collect what's owed to you? I can do that. Four workers still haven't paid up. Phyllis, Conrad, Ludwig, and Martin Abernathy. He's a special case. You may want to twist his arm a little. Uh, where can I find these people? Conrad's got a barbershop in town. Phyllis works at the cannery most hours. Abernathy... I ain't seen him in a few days. His domicile is near the cannery. You'll find him in town. All except Ludwig, that is. He's over by the landing pad. All right. Do I want to know why Abernathy is a special case? He just is. Look, of course I don't you won't tell get me. Into it. Just make sure he pays up. I'll see what I can do, man. I'll see what I can do. Let's hit Ludwig first, cause Ludwig is outside. Everybody else is inside. It makes the most sense to take care of this one first. Why is he outside? Is he like ostracized? Is, are they abandoning him? Edgewater landing pad discovered. Oh yeah, you get XP for discovering places. For sure, for sure. I remember. I remember. Thank the law. I've been requisitioning backup for months. Guess the boss finally came to his senses. You ever swung a truncheon? Let me see your rifling stance. I want to make sure you're up to snuff. Yo, what are you talking about, man? The war. The coming apocalypse. Man versus machine. I'm talking about mechanical soldier. Cold, heartless automatons made of iron and lies. 
Uh, yeah, gotta watch out for those mechanicals. That's right. That's what I've been saying. We gotta square our shoulders and stand ever vigilant. Auto mechanicals. Creatures forged in the fires of malevolence. I seen them over by the old power plant, clattering about, firing at the birds, orchestrating their uprising. Really? When the swarms of mechanicals come clanging on over that hill, where will you be? Cowering beneath your cot? Or standing shoulder to shoulder with the resistance? I'll give you one thing. You for sure know how to, how to like, know how to get niggas blood pumped. You can be a, a leader of a military for sure, but you got a little screws loose, man. Maybe two or three screws loose because you wallin'. Silas sent me for the gravesite fee, man. I told Silas I'd pay my dues if he agreed to join the resistance. Mm -hmm. Guess this means he's finally heard the calling. For sure. He sure did. And he's asking for a little extra to uh, furnish the resistance with medical repellent. Mechanical repellent. A stroke of inspiration from the law itself. Yeah, I've been saving up a couple of bits for just such a project. If you need another gun, I am for hire. I've been gathering up a war chest over the years. So tuna cans, mostly. Some spacer's chaw. Mm -hmm. A few bit cards. I'll reward you for your aid. Oh, I'm extorting this man. Enlistment fees. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Wouldn't want to give the resistance a bad name. What do you need done? They have sent a scout. Prowling around the junkyard just behind our beloved town. This scout must not be permitted to return to its base of operations. Cross it off, then report back. Got you, got you, got you. All right, so that's the first guy taken care of. Let's move on to the next. Oh, man, it's been so long. Looks so nice, man. Phyllis Granger is the closest Sorry, to me, I'll just I believe. Be a minute. You had a minute. Next one comes out of your pay. He's off the threats, friend. I'm going. Boss's orders. We all got quotas to make. Damn. This place is harsh, man. Why is it so harsh? The guy out there don't give a fuck about niggas dying. Do everybody not care about niggas dying or something? Like, what's happening? I'm looking for a Phyllis. You're safer inside the walls. They playing Wild West music. Is something about to pop off? Phyllis, don't do nothing crazy. You the new worker? Whatever. Make it quick, Tenderfoot. I'm busy. I'm guessing you're the foreman. Foreman Granger. Mind those words don't come out of your mouth unless preceded by yes or right away or thank you. Mm-hmm. Graveside fees. Shit. Silas still on about that. Here, take the fees. I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell Reed I was late on my payment. Because they're not my fees and not my gravesite. Guy I worked with shot himself. I paid the bill. Oh, how nice. I could do without the sarcasm. Wasn't uh, acting out of the goodness of my heart. Law requires delinquent gravesite fees to be paid by the deceased party's closest living relative, which meant me. Mm. Shame, though. Eugene was a good worker. He said he shot himself. Do I, oh, yeah. Woke up one morning and put a round through his upper story. Can't imagine why. The kid was doing all right at his desk. We all thought he was an upstanding receptionist. Just between the two of us. I'm pretty shocked his weapon didn't misfire. Ah. Spacer's choice handguns aren't the most reliable. Uh, that's an awful thing to say. Not half as awful as the bill Eugene left us with. Suicide's a crime. What? Legal term is irreparable damage <laughs> what? to company property. What Eugene did to himself was vandalism. S what? Offing yourself is considered vandalism? I'm plenty serious. In fact, I'm a little upset Eugene didn't think things through. Upset! In other words, Edgewater would have been penalized pretty hard. Whatever Eugene was worth as an asset, we would have had to pay out of pocket to Spacer's choice. Well, excuse you. I'll have you know Eugene was an asset to us all. May his atoms be commended to the law. All I know is Silas asked me for Eugene's gravesite fees, which means he was approved for burial, which means his papers went through, which means the town's in the clear. I'm just glad to put this whole ugly affair behind me. Eugene can rest his bones in peace, and the rest of us can get on with our own lives. This town is cruel, bro. This town is heartless, cold. 
I never heard no shit like that in my life. Let me get out of here before I throw up, man. Who's next on the list? Yes, Mr. Thompson. I'm fine, Mr. Thompson. Never been healthier. What? Well, uh, did, uh, did Mr. Thompson send you? No. Well, you tell Mr. Thompson I'll be right at my post tomorrow. Uh, bright and early tomorrow. Because I'm definitely not plagued. As spry as a spring chicken. <laughs> That's old Abernathy. Better say, chill well, out. What are you doing here? Visiting? Well, let me give you the grand tour. This here's my domicile, and there's the door. See, 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 you being rude. Give me the gear side for knows, doesn't he? That's why he sent you. That's why he wants me to pay up. He knows. Sounds like he's already told you. <laughs> you may as well hear it from I'll me. I'll be lying like crazy. I'm dying. I'm not long for this world. The date of my expiration is fast approaching. And soon I shall be ushered through the great cannery in the skies. It's plague. Has to be. Silas knows. He knows I got one foot in my grave, and now he wants to charge me for the other one. I'll pay your fees. I don't want any trouble from Silas. But if you could see a way to freelancing for me, I could really use the help. You just try to kick me out, and now you need my help? Depends on what you need. Couple hours out of your day and some light second story work. That's all. There's a cache of anthracillin tucked away in the old community center. Powerful stuff. Stronger than what we got, anyway. I need you to break in, nab that medicine, and bring it back to me. I, I guess. You oblige me with your haste. I think I feel the plague spreading. Oh, law, it's in my spleen now. I can feel it. Hey, don't be, don't be, don't be. You're taking an awful risk, trusting me, you know. I know that. But I got nobody else to turn to. Reed would have wrote me up. Constable would have locked me up and wrote me up. Could have gone to see the good vicar, but I never did find my courage. Alright, alright. A sick old man. Being a fucking smart ass. You're making a mistake working for Abernathy. Excuse me? Excuse me. I'm Esther Blaine, Spacer's Choice Actuary. I overheard your talk with Abernathy. I hope you're not thinking about getting him that medicine. Abernathy is a well known hypochondriac. Anthracillin is wasted on him. You're better off selling it to me instead. What do you need it for? I probably shouldn't tell you. Don't want you implicated for what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Let me worry right. about that. Here's a summary. A lot of sick people in this town, and we don't have the medicine to treat them all. Can't reach out to corporate without crossing a river of red tape, so I'm reaching out to you. Oh, yeah, I'm extorting everybody. This I'm paid better than Abernathy. Ooh. Whatever he's giving you, I will do you one better. Ooh. That's all I can ask of you. You people only care about the bread and working hard. So I'm going to extort every single one of you. Unless I find a pure-hearted person. Because none of you come off as pure-hearted. All of you come off as jerks. Emerald Vale Barbershop. Let me get the cut, G. Please don't touch anything. Your hands are probably crawling with germs. Oh, look. Another smart ass. Hygiene recapitulates moral hygiene. Cleanliness is next to lawfulness. All right. No, thank you. That's quite all right. I've seen enough body parts in my line of work. I'm Conrad. You will report to me if your hair fails to meet Spacer's Choice aesthetic standards. You will also report to me in the event of your death, whereupon I will clean and prepare your remains for interment. Okay. I'm I'm here to collect your dues, ah, bro. Gravesite fees. Silas and I had talked about this at length. I thought I'd made it clear my pecuniary situation precludes the necessary restitutions. What, bruh? Pecuniary precludes 
Restitutions? You do not talk like this on the regular. You mean broke? As broke as pie crust, friend. Bitless, indigent, destitute. I simply cannot afford it. I am a blemish on the prosperity of our fair settlement. When I expire, I expect Silas to toss my body into a ditch. This is crazy. I say guilt tripping me right now. Being sad, bro. That's some quality drama, God, right? Thank you, no. I despise the cereals. Tell Silas I can't afford to pay. And that I fully expect to have my medical rights revoked for this dereliction. With my apologies. Well, so just give Silas an IOU. Not a bad idea. But I'd need some kind of collateral. My pair of lucky clippers. No, that won't do. Your idea intrigues me, but I'm afraid I don't have anything to give Silas. I'm open to suggestions. Much obliged. I'll find something, man. But for now, let me go give what I got to Silas. Silas! Fancy threads. That's some kind of hibernation suit. Why? You run into any trouble? Well, yeah, Conrad can't pay. Conrad's barbershop is a yawning pit that swallows his every bit. I keep telling him he should cut a few corners. Skimp out on the disinfectant. You gotta put the squeeze on Conrad. Find some dirt on him. Maybe check his back room. Hey, man, you extorting, I extorting. I ain't need to ask no questions. Check his back room. You just gonna, you just gonna let me walk in your back room like that, son? Examine? Conrad. Reception has shot himself. This is bad. The company's going to have to call it for what it is. Destruction of space for choice's property. Jesus. Eugene was an asset. Somebody has to pay his body price. This is going to ruin us. So I was thinking that we pawn off his teeth. Eugene had a full set of gold teeth. Heirlooms passed down his family or something. You're processing his body, right? Just dig around and pry them out. We sell the teeth somewhere nice and quiet. Use the bits to pay his body price. Nobody's the wiser. What do you think? Don't write back. In fact, don't talk to me at all. Just give me a special signal next time you see me. Waggle your eyebrows. Phyllis. Aw, oh, so you niggas was plotting. You was plotting, son. Uh, I know about Eugene. Why not use his teeth as collateral for your gravesite fee? You know about Eugene? How? You're asking too much questions. You probably heard it from one of our local gossip mongers. Eugene's golden teeth were a family heirloom, representing three generations of poor dental hygiene. He took them to his grave. I'm sure he won't miss them, considering, you know. You know? That's unthinkable. Eugene's body and all rare earth minerals contained therein are solely the property of Spacer's choice. I can't ask Silas to dig up a man's body and pry a few teeth loose from his jaw just to pay my bills. Can I? I don't give a damn. Here you are. Gravesite papers affixed with my signature and an IOU. Bye, man. And close down this goddamn barbershop if you ain't making no bread, man. Get into the farming business or something. Grave digging's a fine profession. Always work to be had, and nary a word of complaint out of your clients. Yeah. Ah, 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 ah. You run into any trouble? Nah, we all good, man. Reliable work from a freelancer. That's gonna take some getting used to. And I'll buy you a drink sometime. Uh, suppose you've earned it. One good turn deserves another. You don't need to know about that nigga illness. He paid me handsomely. How much money I got now? 593 bids. That's what I'm talking about, man. Civilization looks pretty sturdy, but like, man, you niggas are heartless. This all tuna cannery. This place again. Miss Holcomb, I need you to explain this. Yes. The grease monkey, oh. Argo. 
I'm sorry, Mr. Thompson, sir. You asked why it's taking so long to fix. The answer's technical. Don't apologize. Just try using small words for me. The cans bust open in the oven because she's set to cook saltuna, which isn't what we've got. Mr. Thompson? I think there's someone here to see you. No, oh, no, Ms. don't. Wickham, you and I are still <laughs> don't mind me. Let's start over. Walk me through the process. Show me where it's going awry. Well, sure. It's uh, mostly on account of what we're feeding into the mechanism. It puts food in cans. We have food, we have cans. Why won't it work like we need? She's expecting Seltuna of a certain size. We're filling the cans with... Well, not fish. Are y'all ready for me? Seems we've got a guest. Really now, Parvati, I do wish you'd spoken up. I do apologize. I was given no forewarning of your arrival, or I might have welcomed you at the gates myself. You must be the town's boss. I'm Reed Thompson, outpost administrator. I cannot help but notice you are not in uniform. Uniform? What are you talking about? Shirt, pants, work boots, company approved colors, the uh honorable apparel of a loyal worker? I don't work with you niggas. Yes, so it dawns on me. Seems I allowed my excitement to run away with my wits. Been a few seasons since we've had a visitor pass through. Alright. Only regulator we got is hooked up to the town transformer. Mr. Thompson ain't liable to be keen on dismantling it. I beg your pardon. I am most emphatically not keen on any such thing. I can't let you have our power regulator. But I happen to know of another one, and I happen to know exactly how you may retrieve it without frying yourself in the process. Mm -hmm. There's a power regulator in the old botanical lab. It's mostly abandoned, so all that power is being squandered. Mostly Go down to the abandoned. geothermal plant. Reroute power from the botanical district over I to caught us. that. Mostly Once power abandoned. Shut down, you can have their regulator and be along on your way. I was not entirely sure how to tell you this. The botanical labs are not legally inhabited, but there are people who live there. Of course. Of course. What a surprise. I never would have guessed. I am not trying to pull one over on you, friend. You were bound to run into them sooner or later. The people living in the botanical labs, they're deserters, former workers. I need them back at their posts. I need them to come home. Why? Edgewater is struggling. We haven't hit our production quota in years. If we don't meet our quotas this year, the company might shut us down for good. I need those workers back at their stations. You had to leave for a reason. I've seen Edgewater. I don't blame those workers for walking out. Yeah. Neither do I. The fault was entirely mine. I pushed them too hard. My hope is that by cutting off their power, you will convince those deserters to come back to town. Before you go to the plant, I want you to stop by the botanical lab. Speak to their leader, Adelaide. Tell her the power's about to go, and that it's time her band of deserters came back to town. This is a terrible, this is a terrible plan. So you want me to pretty much strong arm them, manipulate them into coming back against their will because if i just steal their power they're not going to want to come back son i can't make no promises of course i understand completely here let me give you the passcode to the geothermal plant a sign of good faith for so politely listening to me as i ramble on are you setting off for the veil because i know my way around i, I mean in case you want a guide of course i mean man. if that's all right with you mr thompson sir i hesitate to part ways with miss holcomb but I cannot deny that she is talented and may prove useful to you. Come on, Parvati. Great. I got my wrenches and diagnosticators and hairpins and engine tape, so I'm all set. Well, I am glad to hear that. Best of luck to you, and thank you again for your help. It is a lot to ask of a stranger, I know. Ooh! You gained a companion. They are characters that join you in the adventures and help in a variety of ways. Come on, Parvati. Be out this bitch. So, come here often. Hey, mister, can we talk? 
Sorry. Can we talk? Sure. Sorry. I... You just want to get out of here. And you likely don't want to tag along like me. It's just... Mr. Thompson has his own view on matters. On account of it's his job and, and what all, but... That's not the only side of the tale. This about the deserters? So what's the other side of it? To Mr. Thompson, a person's a gear. It does its job quiet-like. If it squeaks or stutters, it gets replaced. The deserters are decent folk. I knew some of them before they left. Life's hard here. Especially for them that don't fit in so well. We're one big Spacer's Choice family, but every family's got the one the rest whisper about. Right. Mr. Thompson's aiming to take away their power. They'll have no lights to see, nor heat to cook. They'll be at the mercy of marauders, or worse. I think you should talk to the town's vicar about it. Max, his name is. Where would I find this vicar? The mission's on the east side of town. You can't miss it. On account of it being the only clean thing. <laughs> All right. Thanks, mister. No problem, no problem. I just think when you got to make a decision that'll hurt somebody, it's best to think on the right and wrong of it. That's what my dad used to say anyways. He sounds like a good man, Parvati. He sounds like a good man. Oh, okay, so this is his whole uh, ordeal. Got you. It's a church. I've always felt weird in here. It's too clean. You mean it's too clean? Yeah, this place is crazy. Yes, what is it? You're an outsider. Fantastic. Vicar Maximilian de Soto at your service. Or Vicar Max, if you're the sort who prefers brevity. And Ms. Holcomb as well. How rare to see you out. And with a complete stranger. Curious. Just tagging along, Vicar de Soto. Don't mind me. I so rarely get new people to talk to. Name your poison, anything at all. Spiritual counseling, this season's toss ball predictions, the quickest way out of town. Parvati wanted to talk to you about what Reed asked us to do. How did you know I'm an outsider? What sort of spiritual advice do you offer here? I mean, yeah, Parvati, come on. But what? I thought you would talk to him. Come on. You wanted to speak to me, Ms. Holcomb? Every time I've tried to engage you in conversation, you look at the floor, answer in single words, and slink away. I can't imagine what would be so grave as to drive her to my mission. What has Mr. Thompson asked you to do? Cut off power to the deserters. If you could answer quickly, we're in a hurry. Nah, I'm not in a hurry. Depriving them of safety from the marauders and wildlife. I can see why that troubles you. Right. Miss Holcomb has a soft heart. Always has, if you believe the talk. I mean, I believe it. What do you think of Adelaide's group? They rejected the order of society and live beyond the walls so thoughtfully provided by our Spacer's Choice patrons. Does that strike you as a responsible life choice? I mean... Astute. But I am here, not in the deserter camp. So that's not a variable I can account for. Fair. Assuming your goal is to save as many as possible, then you should bring everyone together. Send the power to Edgewater and convince the deserters to return to the full. All right, just talk to everybody into coming together. I'll keep that in mind. If it were as easy as a few soothing words in the right ears, I'm sure it would have been done already. Consider it... A challenge. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind a bit of unsolicited advice, be cautious on your way to the geothermal plant. It is not as safe as you might assume. Right, right, right. I've been outside, I'm not impressed, and I can handle myself better than a vicar. That's so rude. Why is that? One of the reasons I transferred here was to fulfill my duty in hunting down banned heretical texts. I happen to know such a book is, as we speak, tainting a collector's library in Emerald Vale. However, the collector's residence lies outside the town's walls. My retrieval efforts have been thwarted by marauders who have overrun the property. Should you fare better than me, I'd pay a handsome sum for the book. 
A handsome sum. It's a handwritten this journal, about that a faded blue cover with the name M. Bakonu handwritten in the lower corner. I'll mark where I saw it on your map. Assuming you're serious? Yeah, I'll... I'll look for the book. Uh, you, Thank you, you offering bread, If man. you retrieve it, you can always find me here. I leveled up just for talking to him. That's fine. I feel like that's a decent place to stop, right? Leveled up twice. Made it to Edgewater. Got a new ship. Got a partner. Oh, and let's not forget we was strong army niggas for money not too long ago. I feel like that was a, a pretty meaty episode, if I do say so myself. Uh, next episode, we'll head to the geothermal plant, you know? See what we have to do there. Depending on how they act towards me is uh, how I handle the situation. But we won't know until we reach that episode. So if you like this video, like the video. Subscribe. Share this motherfucker. And tell the person you shared it with. What? That was your part, Parvati. To do the exact same thing. I'm Esco. And I will see you next time. Be safe out here. Peace. So crazy how close the moon is, yo. That is the moon, correct? Or is that like... But what's that? Sun. What? Huh? Is that the sun? But why is the sun out of the... Here, make...